So you've got an extra 20 gallon enclosure just sitting around in your basement from a past project and you're thinking, what are my options? What could live in this enclosure for its whole life? Well today, let's go over the top five reptiles you can keep in a 20 gallon enclosure for their whole life. My name's Adam, this is Littlefoot. You're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Number five, hognose snakes. Now these ones usually make it higher on a list or closer to number one on a list. And you guys know if you watch the channel, I absolutely love hognose snakes. Hognose snakes are some of my favorite reptiles that there are, period. This is kind of my favorite thing to breed, my favorite thing to keep. The reason that they're number five instead of number one where they're usually at is because I think that there are some outliers where these animals need a 40 gallon enclosure or that equivalent size. And the reason is some females get really big and if you have a 600 gram female uh, something that gets to three feet long exceeding three feet long i personally think that a 20 gallon is too small but i've got this three bin enclosure here this three sectioned off pvc and in two of the sections are full-grown hognose snakes my boy nikki here this is a full-grown male he fits in just fine and ekans she fits in fine as well she barely takes the entire length of one of the sides there if she were to get any bigger, I would probably upgrade her into probably half. I'd probably put her in a 40 gallon enclosure is what I'm trying to say here. But the reason that you want them, the reason they're on the list is they come in all sorts of different colors. They have this really cool keeled scale and this upturned snout. They look gorgeous. I think that hognose snakes are maybe one of the most underrated, although they are definitely gaining in popularity, snakes that you could possibly get. And because they're a North American species, for those of you who are watching in Canada or the US, a lot of places, although, you might find issues with the legality of them. They're not super difficult to find and they're not super expensive. And the morphs, they're coming down in price where you're actually able to afford something like an albino and it's not gonna cost you tons and tons of money anymore. But there are some things to consider. These guys are a rear fang venomous species. So basically all that means is they have these fangs at the back of their throat. They're just these teeth that have, well, they're not even grooved, they're smooth teeth. Now they'll chew this venom, this very mild venom that would definitely kill a toad, but it's not gonna kill a human. It might make your hand swell up or likely do nothing to you. So something to keep in mind, but they don't get big. I mean, maybe three feet, males, one and a half feet, and they're gonna be small for their whole life. So it's kind of the perfect snake. And because they're a drier type species, like, and they're not super dry, you don't need crazy heat requirements. And then of course, uh, your substrate is really easy as well. You've got Aspen, perfect, you're golden. They do like to dig, but the substrate doesn't have to be expensive or, or hard to take care of. I could go on and on about hognose snakes for a really long time, but I won't. There's a whole care guide up here if you'd like to watch it and let's just move on. Number four, house snakes. This is one I very rarely speak about, but I get so many messages. Hey man, talk about house snakes. You should get a house snake. I should. These guys are freaking awesome. Now, African house snakes is what I'm talking about. They're from Africa. No way. A four foot house snake is a big house snake. A lot of the times you're gonna find them a lot smaller than that. And they have this really cool coloration that isn't super interesting or exciting in my opinion, but it looks just, I don't know, beautiful naturally. And I'm one of those guys that likes natural morphs. Although you can actually find albinos in different types of house snakes, different morphs now. It's not gonna be as easy to find them as say a hognose snake or something like that. What makes them great is their temperament. These guys will like to be handled. They can be handled really well and they're really great eaters as well. And you can get them on rodents right away. That's the, the gripe with hognose snakes is sometimes it's tough to get them to eat. With house snakes, from the people that I talk to all the time who tell me I should get them because of how great they are, the same thing that they always say is they eat really well. Number three, garter snakes. They almost didn't make the list. The only reason I put them on the list is because they were so asked for. And here's why I, I was reluctant. I think, in my opinion, garter snakes are one of the few snakes you should house with other garter snakes. You should house them with 
more of their own because they do well in colonies. They do well in groups where most snakes don't. But if you wanted to keep one or two of the smaller species of garter snake, because there are several in a 20 gallon, you could. If you get a larger species of garter snake and you wanna keep several, go up to a 40 or a 75 or even bigger. And if you're gonna write in the comments, don't keep garter snakes in a 20, I've never heard. Listen, I understand, I get it. But with there are some species, the smaller species especially, that you can definitely keep in a 20 gallon enclosure. For example, a butler's garter snake, which is one of the most common ones, especially here in North America, they're only gonna get to maybe two feet. And we're talking that is a big butler's garter snake. So if you get something that size and you wanna keep two of them together, I personally see no issue. Again, bigger is always better if you wanna give them a 40 all the power to you, but I stand by this. I think that a 20 gallon enclosure with a couple of butler's garter snakes, if it was furnished correctly, would be really freaking cool. And what makes garter snakes so interesting is their diet. Sure, they'll eat rodents for you, but you can feed them other things. A lot of people ask, Adam, is there snakes that are out there that don't need to eat rodents? If you're against that for whatever reason or can't find a supply, these guys will eat amphibians, they'll eat fish. It's actually really cool to watch them fish for their food. If you put a little bowl of fish that are safe for garter snakes, it's really fun to watch. So they have a, a unique diet and they also are, very, are they're diurnal just like a hognose snake would be, but they bask. Where hognose snakes don't really do this, or sometimes they will, with garter snakes, you see it much more often. You're gonna see them basking under a light, which is why, sure, you could give them underbelly heat instead, but giving them a light inside of an enclosure, which is a display enclosure, is really freaking cool. And sure, they are handleable. They're gonna musk on you a bunch first, but you don't have to worry about the rear fanged venomousness of a garter snake as much because they're very, very reluctant to bite and they'll probably just try to musk on you instead. All right, let's take a break from the snakes. How about that? Number two, it's your, come here. It's your, your time to shine. Number two is a leopard gecko. Now, leopard geckos and African fat tail geckos, let's make it that because they are so similar, unbelievably similar that the enclosure size is gonna be the same for both. And there's, if you wanna know the difference between the two, there's a whole video I did up here explaining it. But leopard geckos are more common. There's more morphs, they're cheaper, easily more easily found. I think I said that already. African fat tails, they're kind of the same thing. And when I say that, they're not from the same area. They do have different humidity requirements, but they look so similar, most people wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And their care requirements are so similar, besides the humidity, it's almost the exact same. And yes, a 20 gallon enclosure for their whole life works. A lot of people say 10 gallon, I completely disagree. And if you wanna give them something that's bigger, all the power to you. I always give the biggest enclosures that I can afford in, in terms of space to give to my animals. And with leopard geckos, I used to have her and her sister, which some people don't like to cohab, but if you get them at the same time, you keep an eye on them, you do it properly. There's a whole video here on how to cohab properly. Her and her sister, Sarah, were kept in a 40 gallon for years, for three years, until I had to repurpose the enclosure for something else. So if you wanted to do something like that, where you give them a much bigger and more interesting to look at and kind of scape it so that it looks more realistic, I think that would be perfect. And you could even do that in a 20 gallon. What makes them awesome is they're so amazing to handle. Like this gecko wants nothing to do with getting away from me. They're the easiest to handle of the small lizards, in my opinion. Uh, African fat tails, they're a little bit more skittish, but they tame down really easy. As you can see with Diglett here, this was very easy to take shots like this. And the same thing, if you're someone who likes to take shots of you and your animals and post them on Instagram, leopard geckos are impressive. They're not super big, they are small, but they look impressive. They come in, a, a, seems like a million different morphs, not actually a million, but pretty darn close. And also their diet is super easy. I mean, feed them insects and then feed them more insects and feed them more insects and that's it. They eat nothing but insects. In terms of ease of care, and if, especially if you're looking for something, hey, I've got this extra enclosure, I wanna get something that's small and beginner level, this might be the best beginner lizard or species of reptile, period. And even if you're not a beginner, they're just amazing. These are some of my favorite. I always have them on my shoulder in the videos. You guys know that. Littlefoot here has her whole, whole line of merch if you wanna buy here. Leopard geckos are amazing. The last reptile on the list is small enough to be covered by my hands here. And the reason I cover it like this is because this is a holy grail reptile for me. One of the ones I've wanted forever and could just never find. Maybe a little bit more rare, a little bit more interesting. Number one, this is a rubber boa. I finally got one. These are, in my opinion, one of the most exciting species that you can find in all of herpticulture. 
look how tiny this thing is. They do get bigger. This is a baby. And what makes them so interesting is that they often don't eat until after their first brumation. So this animal was born in March. They usually brumate around this time of year. I'm going to try to feed them and see if it eats. And if it doesn't, then it's going to go into brumation for three, four months. And then we're going to get them out and they're going to eat. But even in the best of times, if you can get a boa, these things are going to be under three feet. It's a boa species from North America. How cool is that? These things are very similar to a rosy boa. These guys obviously have a different pattern and coloration. You're not going to find a lot of morphs. They look like rubber. I don't think that's why they're called rubber boas. But what's very interesting is they have a tail that looks like a head. And it's not very pronounced on this individual because this is just a baby. The reason that they do this is because when they go into nests, they'll eat an entire nest full of rats or mice or small type of animal like that that they prey on. And then as they're eating the babies, they're fending off the mother with their tails, doing feigned strikes as if that's the head. So you're keeping the mother occupied as you're eating her. This is so morbid. <laughs> So why is this animal so cool? It looks not that interesting, not that exciting. It's brown, there's no morphs. What is it about this animal that's so cool? Well, it's cool because it likes cool environments. That's one thing. This is the only boa species you'll find in Canada, Western part of Canada, in the US as well. They like cooler temperatures, so you can't stick them in your regular reptile room, most likely. Somewhere 70-ish degrees, 75 a lot of people will say. And then you can brumate them real low into the 50s sometimes even the 40s people say and their diet although it takes a while to get them going and they're a little bit more interesting or more difficult to get eating especially if you're a newer keeper so maybe not for you but yeah they're gonna eat really well once they get going as a boa they're live bearers they give small litters they're not gonna give you a whole bunch of babies at the same time i think this one came from a litter of five but they're not gonna get big that's kind of the theme of this, right? You can keep them in 20 gallons their whole life. Some people even say tens. I'm likely gonna put this guy in a 20 gallon display enclosure once we're done with the brumation and we get this guy eating. But for me, it's the docile nature. The way that they look is so unique. The way they act is so unique. I love rubber boas. Rosy boas are another one that I definitely would like to have on my list. They would maybe fit in a 20 gallon, but for now, your number one is a rubber boa. Thank you guys so much, the Patreon supporters. You guys already knew about this animal. I put this up, you know, extra stuff and early videos and things that most people don't know about. Everyone's gonna know first on the Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. You guys are awesome. And a big thanks to our friends at Cages who, that's who I'm gonna get the enclosure for when this guy is ready for his full-time enclosure. These are the best built enclosures that you can buy period. If you use the link below in code WWR, you'll get free door handles at checkout, free shipping through the entire United States, and you get your stuff before you die of old age, unlike the competition. These guys are freaking awesome. I think, have I plugged absolutely everything? Hit subscribe. See you on Thursday.